Hello Epic people, Mike here. Today I'm going to be talking about my user experience using the Fujifilm X106 as a video camera. And before I begin, I just wanted to make sure that I do know that the Fujifilm X106 is more photo-centric camera, but it does have a very good video features and there are a lot of people that are going to be shooting video with this and just letting you guys know what to look out for. First of all, I want to talk about the autofocus. And just to let you guys know that I did not buy this camera out of hype. I have been using Fujifilm for a long time. I had it since X-T2 came out. So I had the X-T2, X-T3, X-T4, and X-T5. The autofocus on Fujifilm system has improved greatly. But I don't want to really compare, but I shoot Sony main for my video work. And compared to Sony, I still think Fujifilm is a little bit lacking with the autofocus system. So if you guys are planning on shooting video with X106, the focus is pretty good, but it's very snappy. As in, if you are changing subject from subject A to subject B, the transition of focus is not as smooth. It's going to be like boom, boom 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 so sometimes it might not look very smooth um, so in order to prevent this I if I need to change focus smoothly I'll use manual focus or I use this um, autofocus setting when I'm shooting with this camera second this thing shoots 6k and 4k 60 frames per second and those of you who are trying to shoot video with those two video modes, there is going to be a 1.25 times crop factor applied to it. And talking about 6K, if you shoot 6K uh, and you try to play back your footage, there's gonna be a little bit of a lag on your LCD. Uh, probably because if the file size is so big and you try the processors try to work things out to play the actual footage, but I tried different speed uh, SD card and still was the same. Uh, but if you shoot 4K high quality, that still played normally, but just using 6K footage, it did lag a little bit. It felt a little bit sluggish. And speaking of playback, um, you still have to use the joystick in order to navigate through different portion of your footage. I really wish that you can just use your touch feature and just drag it to a certain point. But right now you do have to use the joystick to fast forward or rewind to go to a certain point. It will be a good software upgrade if you can utilize the touch um, for dragging to a different part of uh, footages. That would be convenient. And one more thing, uh, on photo mode and video mode, the actual focus mode or focus points are a little different. For photo, there's I think five or four different type of focus versus on video, you only get three. And what you get is multi, which is basically the whole screen and the spot and there's tracking. But on photo, there's like wide, there's like area mode. I wish they did have area mode on the video side of things, but you, know, you just have to get used to the focusing mode on photo and video. And speaking of switching back and forth, um, because this is such a smaller body and more of a photo centric camera, they are very limited in buttons and customization. For instance, um, you can't really customize any button to go back and forth from photo mode to video mode. So if you want to change it to video mode from your photo mode, you actually have to click on drive, change it to video, and then OK in order to shoot video. There is no quick switch or dial to change it to video. And there is a way that you can actually shoot video on your photo mode. But if you use that feature, you won't be able to change the settings of your videos. And this one, it doesn't really bother me much, but those of you who have to change exposure while you're recording and you're using the dial, you're definitely going to 
have a little bit of a camera shake if you're using the dial on the top or your exposure compensation because the dials are very tactile in a sense so even with a little bit of a turn there is going to be a little bit of a shake and also when you are changing exposure the exposure doesn't change smoothly for instance for aperture ring if you change your aperture it doesn't smoothly adjust it you can actually see the steps of brightness changing there is a way to avoid using the dials and that is the movie optimized something i forgot what it was where you can actually use the touch screen to change the actual values of shutter speed iso and um, aperture that way it won't affect what you have on your dials but you always can just change it with a touch screen and last thing is the external mic jack uh, as everybody know the x106 and x105 i think the previous generation does not have the 3.5 millimeter audio jack it does have the 2.5 millimeter so if you want to use an external microphone you do have to get a adapter that changes from 2.5 millimeter to 3.5 millimeter and it's just one more thing that you just have to carry around but you can actually make it work and throughout this video i just made all the bad comments the things that i was not happy but overall i do love this camera to shoot video and one of the main reason is because of the built-in nd filter i don't know how much i appreciate this feature i don't know why not that many people or many manufacturers have this but having nd filter makes shooting video on the daylight time so much easier so i don't have to constantly changing ND filters on different lenses. I don't have to, you know, change exposure. It just makes everything more simpler. And I think that's one of the main reason why this camera is such a popular camera, because it's just made simple. You don't really have to think too much like other cameras do. You just shoot and you just enjoy. So that's it for me today. Hopefully you guys liked my video. If you guys did, please give me a like, subscribe if you guys want to see more camera related videos in the future and until then i'll see you guys next time peace